Okay, great. <laughs> so first of all, thanks to organizer, to Sergey for inviting me to give this talk and thanks to Maria for introduction. It's great to meet you in this virtual space. Well, um, uh, as soon as uh, Sergey has given me full freedom in choosing the topic of my presentation, and I did it actually already a year ago, uh, I decided to talk to things which are not might be so directly related to the scope of the Nanopole project, but nevertheless, uh, it's about polymers and polymer brushes. And specifically, I should speak about uh, conformational transitions in polymer brush confined in a nanopore. And uh, I start with very general introduction because I don't know how well all the audience is familiar with polymer brushes. And uh, actually, polymer brushes were, I could say, invented first in the theory by theoreticians, by great theoreticians, Pierre-Gilles Dejean and Shlomo Alexander, uh, already in the beginning of 70s. And they uh, just published the first scaling uh, papers uh, on this topic. And basically what they have uh, discovered, which remains valid up to date, that if uh, uh, one takes many polymer chains and attach them by end segment to some let's say, solid substrate and immerse them in a solvent, the chains get stretched in the direction perpendicular to the substrate. And uh, the scaling approach of Alexander and Dejean enabled to predict that uh, the characteristic thickness of the layer formed by this grafted to the substrate chains scales proportionally to the overall degree of polymerization. And also uh, they have predicted some power law dependence on the grafting density. The denser the chains are grafted, the stronger they are stretched. So that's uh, that's the main uh, outcome of scaling approach. And then starting from this just seminal point, the theory of polymer brushes started to advance. And in many cases, I would say, uh, amazingly, it advanced even uh, more quickly than uh, the experiment. And first of all, the the scaling theory was gener generalized for chains grafted not to planar, but to, let's say, spherical or cylindrical particles, which enabled immediately to develop theory of micellar structure formed by block copolymers and also conformations of uh, comb-like and star-like macromolecules with long uh, and densely grafted side chains in solution. And I should mention that uh, these advances in theory of polymer brushes are very much due to the works of uh, Tatiana Bierstein and her co-workers in St. Petersburg. Well, uh, further on, uh, it, was, it was possible to make next step in theory of polymer brushes based on so-called self-consistent field method, uh, which I shall briefly uh, talk about later which enabled us to uh, have a deeper insight into internal structure of polymer brushes, in particular to look at the uh, density distribution, distribution of end segments of the chains. And based on this self-consistent field approach, uh, we have further on developed theory of polyelectrolyte brushes, that is brushes formed by ionically charged polymer chains immersed in uh, aqueous or other polysolvent environment. And also theory of brushes formed by topologically complex micro macromolecules, for example, dendritically branched, uh, cyclic, uh, comb-like, etc. So uh, this is just uh, a few words about brushes, but uh, in all the examples which uh, are presented here, uh, we are looking at the brushes which are grafted either to planar or to uh, convex surface. And my talk of today uh, will be about a slightly different uh, situation, but let me first uh, tell you about um, conformational transitions in the brush formed by uh, chains uh, grafted to the planar or maybe convex surface. And this has been uh, also explored quite, uh, quite long ago. And uh, if uh, the brush is well swollen 
uh, when it is immersed in a good solvent, when the solvent uh, is a thermal or maybe uh, just even theta solvent for the brush, it's obvious that the chains are getting stretched uh, in the direction perpendicular to the grafting surface due to repulsive interactions between uh, the monomer units because in good or in theta solvent, these interactions are necessarily repulsive. But if the solvent strength is decreased uh, or by a different way, for example, if we imagine that these chains are thermosensitive uh, with LCST behavior and we start to increase temperature, solvent becomes progressively worse and worse. And this can be expressed also as an increase in the flory huggins interaction parameter, which is directly related to the second vario coefficient of interaction between monomer units. So if the solvent is decreased, the brush progressively dissolves or collapses. And this is quite a smooth cooperative transition, uh, which in contrast to uh, coil to globule uh, transition in a single chain, it's not a phase transition. So that means that the width of this transition is independent of the degree of polymerization. It becomes infinitely narrow for infinitely long chains. And the higher is the graph and density, the smoother is this transition. So these are the main trends which were discovered already for uh, brushes uh, grafted to planar substrate. And uh, if we look at the evolution of the density profile of the polymer density profile in such a brush, in good solvent, when the brush is quite strongly swollen, the density profile is also smoothly decreasing as a function of the distance from the grafting surface. But if we progressively increase the flory parameter, that means we are making the solvent worse and worse. The brush contracts, it's getting more compact. And when we uh, cross this uh, particular value of high equal to 0 0.5, which corresponds to theta solvent, uh, the brush prof the profile of concentration in the brush requires a step-like shape. So that means that at least within this theory, uh, with this analytical theory, there is a, a finite value of polymer concentration reached at the edge of the brush. But if one makes a more uh, accurate, more sophisticated modeling, for example, applying the same ideas of uh, cells consistent, consistent field approach in numerical scheme, like, for example, Swetens Fleer method, then one can see that even in poor solvent, the density profile is slightly smeared out. So that means that there is not a real jump, but kind of a continuously decaying, though quite steeply decaying polymer density profile. And uh, this uh, just smearing of the profile is because of the thermal fluctuation of non-stretched terminal uh, segments of, of the chains forming the brush. Okay, now we switch uh, to the topic actually of my talk and uh, it's about concave brushes. Brushes grafted not to the convex surface, but uh, inside pores. And more specifically, I should speak today about uh, cylindrical pores, although many uh, features are also applicable for planar slits. And why we were interested in this uh, cylindrical pores, because uh, the mm, Pore, which is filled with a polymeric brush, presents a very interesting model to uh, regulate, to control permeation of macromolecules and nanoparticles through such a pore or through, uh, through a membrane, which is perforated by the pores, which are uh, internally modified by polymer brush. And of course, the simplest uh, way to modulate the uh, permeability of such pores for um, uh, colloidal particles and macromolecules is to play with this swelling to collapse conformational transition in such a brush. Because similar to planar brush, when the solvent strength is changed, again, for example, by changing of temperature, uh, then one can trigger this type of swelling to collapse conformational transition in a, in a brush. And if under good solvent condition, when the when the brush is swollen, it completely fills the pore. Uh, in poor solvent condition, the contraction of the brush may uh, lead to the appearance of the open channel in the center of the pore. And then all the particles which fit the size of this open channel may freely diffuse through, through the pore. So this is a model of so-called molecular lock when we can uh, uh, either lock or unlock the pore by changing the conformation of chains uh, grafted to its uh, to the wall. 
uh, well, this is, let's say, uh, really the first uh, and the most simple approach, which allows this not selective diffusive uh, transport in the port to control this transport. And in the second part of my talk, I shall talk about more sophisticated things like uh, selective transport, when particles may still diffuse through uh, the polymer field pore, but uh, their diffusion depends on their specific interaction with the chains forming the brush. Uh, well, a couple of words of uh, theoretical machinery. In order to study conformational transition swelling and swelling of the brush in the pore, we use a, a well-elaborated method, uh, which is called self-consistent field approach, which is based on parabolic approximation for molecular potential, which acts on any monomer units of the uh, brush forming chains inside the brush. And this molecular potential is uh, the derivative uh, of the free energy density of interactions, which is uh, typically written in the form of uh, Flory expression, which comprises logarithmic term and also the term which is responsible for binary interactions uh, between uh, monomer units. And then, uh, without going very much into details, we can uh, calculate explicitly the distribution of monomer density profile inside the cylindrical pore, assuming that the chains are grafted to its surface. And from the condition of vanishing osmotic pressure, this is the equilibrium condition at the edge of the brush, we can, and also by normalization of this density profile, we can find the thickness of the brush as a function of, uh, of course, uh, degree of polymerization of grafted chains, their grafting density, and uh, interaction parameter chi, which quantifies the solvent strength and the radius of the pore. Of course, we should always uh, pick up the parameters in such a way that the pore can uh, fit uh, the brush. That means that the volume per one chain inside the pore is still larger than the uh, overall uh, 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 volume of the chain, which is proportional to the number of monomer units. So what is essential here that the thickness of the brush in the pore, it really depends on the pore radius when all other parameters are fixed. And this is rather busy uh, slide because here we have combined uh, dependence of the brush thickness, not only for linear chain, but also for brushes formed by uh, branched in different way polymer chains. But the main message is that uh, if we look how the brush thickness depends uh, on the radius of the pore, we see that the, when the pore is very wide, then uh, actually there is no dependence and the thickness of the brush is the same as uh, the thickness of the planar brush, which is intuitive. But when we progressively decrease the pore size, this is true for any of this curve, we see that when the thickness uh, of the brush approaches the radius of the pore, there is noticeable increase, so the, the uh, grafting surface becomes more and more concave, and this leads to weak increase in the brush thickness. Uh, okay, and if we look, for example, at the density profile, uh, here it is presented uh, in uh, coordinates uh, distance from the graft, uh, from the pore wall on uh, this axis and high parameter on this axis, we see that uh, uh, the evolution of the density profile in a white pore, when even in good solvent the pore is not completely closed by polymer, it's exactly the same as we have seen for the planar brush. When we progressively make the solvent worse and worse, the polymer density profile becomes more and more compact, approaching step-like function. Uh, if we look uh, at the narrow pore, here we see that uh, at sufficiently good solvent strength, the brush is completely filling the pore, the density, the polymer density does not vanish in the center of the pore. And only if we increase progressively the high parameter, that means we're making solvent strength worse and worse, the uh, polymer density profile is also getting more compact and eventually the open channel appears in the middle of the pore. So uh, this behavior is uh, quite intuitive, but there are still some interesting features which appear uh, when the uh, uh, open channel appears under poor solvent conditions. And uh, let's look at this uh, diagram uh, where I have plotted uh, this line which corresponds to the opening uh, transition in the pore. And we see that uh, if <clears throat> uh, 
the parameters are chosen in such a way that uh, the open channel in the pore appears under uh, the uh, upon the decrease in the solvent strength still under good solvent conditions. This is really a continuous transition. And actually, the opening of the pore happens when the thickness of the brush becomes equal to the radius of the pore. Absolutely natural. However, if uh, the pore is filled in, uh, so uh, strongly that in order to open the channel, one has really to uh, induce collapse of the brush. That means to go uh, from good to poor solvent conditions. Here, uh, the opening transition becomes not continuous, but rather abrupt. That means that if we increase progressively again the solvent, uh, the high parameter, that means decreasing the solvent strength, the uh, open channel uh, appears not when uh, the brush thickness would become equal to the pore radius, but later. And that means that uh, the open channel in the middle of the pore appears jump in a jump-wise way. And the reason for this uh, uh, jump uh, wise transition is the excess free energy at, at the interface between collapsed and the poor solvent condition brush and poor for this brush solvent in the middle. So uh, if we move in the opposite direction, and if, for example, we make the pore uh, more and more narrow, uh, uh, the same type of jump wise transition will occur because it enables to eliminate this unfavorable interface between poor solvent and polymer. And this is also seen, for example, in this picture where the uh, brush thickness is plotted as a function of high parameter for a few different uh, sizes of the pore. If the pore is very narrow, then whatever is the value of high parameter, uh, the brush is always completely filling the pore there is a, a fairly uniform distribution of polymer density. If a solvent is, if the brush is wide, then uh, the opening of the channel happens under good solvent conditions. And in this case, uh, we see that indeed, uh, uh, as long as the thickness of the brush remains, uh, oh, sorry, uh, 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 remains within the uh, radius of the pore, nothing happens, and then uh, the pore is getting opening and further increase in the uh, high parameter leads to progressive collapse of the brush near the uh, pore wall. However, if uh, this opening transition occurs under poor solvent conditions, that means when high parameter is larger than 0 0.5, then uh, in a sense, uh, this uh, orange curve, which was calculated, according to the self-consistent field approach, does not really represent the reality. And when we increase the high parameter, the pore remained filled still for a while. The terminal segments of the chains uh, filling the pore, they are under, under stretched and they're still filling the pore. And then at some uh, particular value of the high parameter, the jump-wise opening of the pore occur and the channel appears in the middle of the pore. Uh, this can be also this transition can be also traced in uh, looking at the density profiles when we change the radius of the pore under poor solvent conditions, and we see that indeed a small change in the pore radius near the opening transition leads to absolutely abrupt uh, opening of the pore. So this pore uh, with a radius equal to zero point eighty five is completely locked. Uh, while uh, the pore with a slightly smaller radius, it is open, and basically this distance corresponds to the size of this minimal uh, channel uh, inside the pore, uh, which can exist and uh, which cannot become uh, smaller, because if it becomes smaller, it becomes thermodynamically unstable. Well, this, of course, is true if we consider infinitely long pore in, uh, when there are not edges. But if the pore is relatively short, the whole scenario becomes much more smooth. And in this case, if the thickness uh, of the membrane or the length of the pore is comparable to the radius of the pore, in the swollen state, the brush it also protrudes outside the pore. Uh, it does not remain on the inside. And when we progressively increase a high parameter, that means decreasing solvent strength, uh, the chains are first uh, pulled from outside to inside the pore. 
And uh, this actually makes the whole transition not as abrupt as it was in the sufficiently long pore or infinitely long pore, when the length of the pore is much longer than its radius. Uh, well, uh, there is another interesting feature in collapse uh, to swell and transition in polymer brushes. This is the formation of so-called uh, pin micelles. And uh, if we look again back to the planar brush, uh, this happens if uh, the brush, uh, which is uh, just collapsing under uh, conditions of decreasing solvent strength, if this grafting density is not very high, and uh, when the brush continues to collapse and reaches the state when the thickness of the brush becomes uh, on the order of the unperturbed size of the Gaussian coil, that means that the chains are losing their stretching in the direction perpendicular to the surface, uh, further decreasing the solvent strength does not lead to uniform collapse of the brush or to the decreasing in the brush and, uh, in the brush thickness and the condition that the lateral density becomes uniform, but rather uh, the lateral inhomogeneity develop and the chains, instead of making a laterally uniform brush, they prefer to make so-called pinned micelles with the clusters uh, connected by legs to the grafting points. And the reason for this is very simple, because uh, there is no any more uh, penalty for the stretching uh, of the brush in the direction perpendicular to the surface. It is replaced by a penalty for stretching of the legs, which is necessary to reach from grafting points to the uh, to this collapsed uh, core. And uh, if one looks at the interfacial free energy, the overall interface between a collapsed polymer phase and poor solvent is smaller. Uh, in in this just pinned micelles rather than it uh, could have been if the brush would remain a laterally uniform structure and have continuous uh, interface between collapsed brush and poor solvent. Uh, and the same type of uh, transition actually uh, one could uh, predict for uh, brushes formed inside uh, the cylindrical channel. And uh, as long as the uh, channel is sufficiently wide, uh, we predict that there will be uh, the array of these pinned micelles, uh, octopus-like micelles, which are grafted to the inner surface of the channel. Uh, but if we keep uh, decreasing uh, the solvent strength, or if we uh, keep decreasing uh, the radius of the channel, uh, it's possible that the transition from this so-called two-dimensional or quasi-two-dimensional array of pinned micelles which are attached to the pore walls, they could be converted to the one-dimensional array when the core of the micelle uh, will be somewhere close to the center, to the axis of the pore, while uh, the, the legs, the chains, they will uh, just protrude to the opposite to the different size of the pore. And this is uh, because the, uh, when we decrease, for example, the solvent strength, the span, the overall footprint of such a cluster, such a micelle, it increases as a function of decreasing uh, solvent strength. And as a result, progressively, when uh, the size of one cluster, the footprint of one cluster becomes comparable to the overall radius of the pore. So uh, this type of transition from quasi two-dimensional to one-dimensional array of pit micelles is predicted. Okay. Uh, uh, I come now, if I still have time, to the uh, second part of my talk, which is related to the regulated permeability of the pore. And here, of course, we got inspiration from nature, from nuclear pore complexes. Uh, which are nanoscale channels which are perforating uh, the nuclear membrane and through which the exchange of uh, different molecules between cytoplasm and uh, uh, interior of the nucleus occur. It's known that uh, these uh, channels are filled with so-called uh, uh, nuclear parins, uh, uh, intrinsically disordered proteins, which uh, are rich in... Uh, phenyl ananil glycine domains, which makes them uh, slightly hydrophobic. Uh, but also it's believed that these domains play the most important role in the uh, selective permeability of the nuclear pores for the particles. And it is known that particles which are smaller than five nanometers, they can freely permeate through the nuclear pore. So they are not 
uh, retained. But for particles which are of larger size, it's necessary that they are getting bound to so-called nuclear transport receptor. Uh, uh, it's a special uh, peptide, and it's believed that it has certain affinity to the nuclear, uh, to this FG domains, and that this facilitates the permeation of the cargo bound to this receptor through the nuclear pore. And the same uh, idea could be uh, also exploited for artificial uh, membranes uh, modified by uh, synthetic polymer brushes. And the idea or the question is whether we can really uh, regulate the transport through the, uh, through the polymer field brush by changing the interaction between the particles or molecules and uh, macromolecules which are forming the brush. And uh, we have, uh, uh, for this uh, purpose, uh, calculated the diffusive flux uh, of uh, nanoparticles through the uh, polymer-modified pore uh, by solving the stationary Smolokhovsky equation, assuming that uh, for particles who, uh, which have to permeate the pore, there are at least two uh, aspects of their interaction with the polymer of the, inside the pore. One is the slowing down of the diffusion because uh, the polymer brush in the pore presents kind of a more viscous media. In a sense, this is not a large scale uh, macroscopic viscosity, but one has to look at the uh, ratio between the size of diffusing particle and the characteristic uh, uh, range of correlation of polymer density in the pore. But this is relatively minor effect. The more important effect arises due to the interaction of the particles with the uh, pore filling brush. And this interaction can be either attractive or repulsive. And if it is repulsive, then the diffusion is slowed down. But when it is attractive, uh, this solution shows the diffusion can be significantly accelerated. And the overall interaction between the particle is in, and the brush comprises uh, two major terms. One is the osmotic term, which is proportional to the volume of the particle and which is related to the work which one has to perform to insert the particle inside the brush where the osmotic pressure is always positive. And the second is related to the surface of the particle and to the interaction of polymer chains with the surface. And when this interaction is sufficiently attractive, the second term can become negative and under certain uh, conditions, with a certain uh, choice of parameters, the overall insertion for energy may become negative, and this should uh, favor the insertion of particle inside the brush, and eventually this may favor uh, and accelerate the diffusion of particles through the brush. Well, I see that I have not so much time left. Maybe uh, I briefly explain how we do this. Uh, so we use, again, the numerical machinery to calculate the polymer a volume fraction inside the pore which is filled with a brush and we do this for the pore of finite length and that's why we have to do all the numerical calculations then we can calculate uh, the insertion free energy using uh, these two major contributions the volume contribution proportional to the osmotic pressure and the surface contribution and then uh, uh, by using the shown already a uh, solution of the diffusion equation, we can e evaluate uh, what will be the diffusion rate or what will be the resistance of the membrane for diffusion of this particle. And maybe this is the last slide which I want uh, to show, uh, uh, where we plot the, uh, the pore resistance, which is the inverse to the permeability to the permeability of the pore. And basically this pore resistance is, uh, it is the proportionality between the uh, concentration gradient and the diffusive flux. And if the pore resistance is high, then it means that the pore is effectively locked for these particles. But if this resistance is low, then the pore is getting uh, uh, permeable for the particles. And we see that indeed the resistance uh, as a function of the particle size very much depends on the interaction for energy between the particle and the polymer filling the pore. When the uh, particle is very much attractive for the polymer, this resistance can be low uh, even for the particles of sufficiently large size and only for very big size, uh, the osmotic contribution pulls the particles outside the uh, the pore, while if the interaction it, uh, between the particle and the polymer is not very attractive, then uh, for even smaller, much smaller particles, the pore becomes uh, already non-permeable. 
So this is the illustration that indeed interaction between the brush in the pore and the particle can be used to allow large particles to permeate through the pore, while much smaller particles cannot do this. And this is uh, again reminiscent to uh, to the principle of nuclear pores. This is just one picture where we have pre pre performed a full uh, numerical solution of the diffusion equation, which basically shows the distribution of concentration of diffusing particles and uh, what happens inside the brush. And uh, in the previous picture, which I shown you, the solid curves are calculation according to, to the theory and the uh, empty squares are the calculations made by full numerical solution of the diffusion equation and we see that indeed the theoretical predictions are in quite good agreement with the uh, with the simulations okay at this point i want to thank all my collaborators from different uh, places uh, different countries different cities in europe i want also to acknowledge funding agency and i want to thank you for your attention thank you very much Thank, thank you very much, Oleg. Uh, there are a few questions on chat. In the, in the interest of time, I will just ask 